To the west of Peru, a massive feeding frenzy erupts. Millions of anchovies and sardines feast on plankton. Millions more predatory fish and seabirds migrate here to feed on the shoals. It is one of the densest volumes of marine life known which is why humans are here too. But this is more than a rich hunting ground. It is also one of the best examples of how two of the Earth systems interact to support life. The first of these is the water cycle but the other is contained inside our globe, the hot, molten interior. It's here where almost all the other materials needed to build life originate. The world is not a solid ball of rock, but more like a molten sphere of super hot liquid with a cool crust on the outside. The Earth's surface is like the skin of a raindrop, and it's inherently unstable. Magnitude 9 earthquake hits Sendai with such incredible force that it pulls parts of Japan two and a half meters towards the USA. At the same time, half the world away, a volcano erupts. It fires a vast pyroclastic plume of ash high into the stratosphere. Such violent events are just local disturbances caused by the ancient slow currents of molten rock that constantly circulate inside the Earth, fueled by the radioactive decay of the Earth's core. It is this material leaking out through the crust that provides the basic elements needed by life. Two systems, one fiery, one watery, interact in many places. The most important occurs on the ocean floor. Two and a half thousand meters beneath the surface, at the bottom of the Atlantic, lies a chain of submarine volcanoes. superheated gases spill out. The end of a 25 million year journey, all the way from the Earth's core, far below. This acidic and toxic world, where pressures are hundreds of times higher than on the surface, 
is where the basic chemistry of life is done. Gases that would normally bubble away react vigorously with the dense, oxygen-rich seawater from Antarctica. The hot minerals that have cycled through the planet's interior so long dissolve into this seawater. Now they react with the oxygen and become powerful materials called nutrients. The seawater, now packed with minerals from inside the Earth, emerges through hydrothermal vents. Living creatures scramble to make use of it. Bacteria are the first to colonize the vents. These tiny organisms thrive in such fertile conditions. Soon more complex creatures feed on the microorganisms. And they in turn are fed on themselves. The nutrients are so plentiful, they cannot all be used here. Ocean currents will carry the surplus away and transport them all around the world and ultimately to the surface. Other currents erode the Earth's land masses, stripping minerals directly from the rock. Back in the rich fishing grounds off Peru, Deep ocean currents are driven upwards as they near the South American landmass, bringing a richness of nutrients with them. Phytoplankton. Microscopic plant organisms make dramatic use of the nutrient-rich water and sunlight. Carbon dioxide is dissolved from the air, giving these tiny single-celled creatures all they need to thrive and reproduce. Now they multiply in their billions. What started as a small patch of plankton proliferates exponentially and can soon be seen from high above. Within just 24 hours, 500 square kilometers of ocean turns from blue to green. The plankton bloom triggers one of the largest feeding frenzies on the Earth. Similar upwellings of nutrients around the world trigger more plankton blooms. Plankton blooms, seen here as vast ribbons of green, can cover as much as one-fifth of the planet's oceans. Plankton is the base of the food chain that conveys the Earth's minerals directly to the billions of tons of living things in the oceans. Minerals that have spent millions of years circulating inside the Earth now form the building blocks of marine life. Within a further 24 hours, the plankton that have not been eaten sink back down into the abyss. They take the carbon and minerals they have ingested with them all the way to the ocean floor. Here they will stay for many millennia, 
a thick covering of tiny carcasses up to a kilometer deep. Eventually, many will re-emerge in the next step of the system and provide the vital chemicals needed to continue the chain of life on land in a most unexpected way. This process plays a pivotal role in shaping the food that we eat and the air that we breathe. It even sustains the richest surface habitat on the planet, the Amazon rainforest. To see how that works means visiting one of the driest and dustiest places on the Earth. violent Sahara. <laughs> 